Okay, so in the last uh, few videos in the series, I've been talking about how we record videos. We've talked about equipment. We've talked about what do you say. Uh, I've shown you different ways of using equipment and from different places. Now I'm in my office. This is where I usually like to uh, make my videos. And here I'm using uh, some lighting. So um, as you can see, there's no lighting in my face. You know, my glasses aren't reflecting back. You can actually see my eyes. It's a little bit of shadow. We actually got to work on it a little bit. I was playing around with the lighting before this. But what I want to talk about today is, and, and by the way, you don't need to have your own studio or anything. You can work it the way I was doing in the other ones. But what I want to talk today is how do we get people from a video to somewhere else? So uh, we can pick some great topics. We can talk about what it is that you want to cover. But you want to have in mind what is it we're trying to accomplish. Now, there's a couple things you're trying to do. Um, first of all, you want to educate customers on what it is that you have to offer. So that's educational. But you want to have some sort of a call to action at the end. Uh, in order to really think that through, let's think about where you're going to place these videos. Uh, one place you want to put these videos is on a blog page of your website so that people can go to your site, they can learn about you, and then they can go to a blog page where they would see different video articles. Um, and along with the articles, you might want to include the transcript. If you look at the way I put this video on my uh, website, you'll see that I include some copy so that there's some uh, additional information. So in that case, the call to action wouldn't be in the video. It would be around the video. So there might be a pop-up. You know, we have pop-ups on our websites that ask people to sign up for uh, one of our lead magnets. Uh, there's an opportunity to sign up for time on my calendar so that we can talk about any projects they might have. There's different ways to go about it. Now, if this is on Facebook, you can include a link there to your website so that people go to something you're offering. Now, uh, in this case, I'm not offering anything specifically. Um, this is part of, of a series for people to learn about videos, but when it takes you to our website, uh, you'll be presented with other options as you're learning more about our business and the kind of services that we provide. Uh, now, if you're just getting started, um, you know, this is the front end of a sales pipeline. So a sales funnel. Um, and I'll, I'll be talking about sales funnels in, in another series. But the idea is this gets them into the first step. They approach your site. If you can get them to land on your site, there's plenty of things you can do. One is you give them a pop-up, you try to get them to sign up so that they can uh, give you their email. Another thing is if they've landed on your site, you can put a pixel in their browser. It sounds scientific, but all we're really doing is remembering who they are so that now we can target ads at them. It's called retargeting. So we can retarget Facebook ads to them. We can retarget Google ads to them. So they could, let's say, visit um, a website, um, ABC News or... Um, you know, anything, a football fantasy um, site, any place that's got advertising, and then your ads would be there. So you're hyper-targeting ads um, at those people. They've taken the step to arrive at your site. They had some interest in your video. So now what you're trying to do is remind them of that thing that they visited your site for. And if they're visiting different sites, like let's say they're just trying to find I don't know, information on cabinets for their kitchen. If they go to your site and they learn about what you do for cabinets and then they're visiting three or four other people's, you know, contractors that are doing cabinets, now you're retargeting them. You're standing out among the crowd because if the other cabinet makers aren't retargeting them and reminding them, they'll be forgotten, but you'll be top of mind. So I, I'm kind of trying to give you the context into which we're recording these videos because there's an end goal here. Uh, now, we want the opt-in or the retargeting first because trying to get them to buy something from you typically is not realistic. And that, of course, depends on what it is that you're selling and what your price point is. But most of the time, what you want to do is familiarize them with you, tell them more about you, establish yourself as an expert so that now uh, a sales transaction can happen. Um, you know, I'll record this in another video, but, you know, I've got plenty of uh, articles where I use the analogy of, you know, you show up, um, you know, at a bar or at a club or something, 
and you meet a girl and you get on one knee and propose to her. The lady's going to look at you and say, you're nuts. So uh, this is very similar. You can't go in for the sale. It's too fast. It's too intimidating. It's just the wrong creepy thing to do, right? So what you want to do is let them get to know you so that you establish that relationship. And then keep in mind, the relationship precedes their interacting with you personally because they've been seeing you on video. They've been watching how you perform. They've had a chance to think, hey, I like that person. Maybe I, I should consider that. So um, I, I wanted to record this video because the context into which you're recording your videos is important so that um, you, you, know, you, you kind of have more of a, of a goal of where you're headed. Um, I'm, I'm going to finish this off with a final uh, lesson, and that's going to talk more about, um, you know, the the longer, the environment into which um, the, the sales funnels and things that follow on. So um, stay stay in touch. Um, there's one more coming.